spring. Uh, for the couple of days that we had spring, it was really nice. It was fun. I was outside working, getting, doing garden prep. I do have some stuff coming up in the garden. Uh, I got the tomatoes uh, coming up in the in the house, getting ready to be needed to replant it. Is it bubbling crew that's coming up in your garden? That would be something. Yeah, no, no, no. But anyway, uh, bubbling crew oil. You know what you've been doing. It's March. It's March, and that's the kind of weather you get in March. I know what you've been doing. Absolutely. So we're in John 16 tonight. So if you're at home, I invite you to. Uh, Get your favorite evening beverage and get your copy of God's Word and turn to John 16. Now, as you know, during Lent, we've been offering something special. We've been giving tips on how to economize. Here we go, Peter says. Here we go. Tips on how to economize and that's to help us deal with the rising gasoline, although I understand the House of Representatives in Connecticut today was voting to uh, have a holiday on the 25 cent a gallon gas tax through June. So then we get sticker shock in July. Uh, the Senate, yeah, yeah, I guess, right. is going to vote for it. But they say we really don't need the $90 million because we got all this money, federal money, which of course the federal budget doesn't have either. They just printed the money. Uh, but anyway, uh, I kind of have mixed emotions about it, uh, something like that. I, gas tax is supposed to be spent on the roads. Right. I want it spent on the roads. Uh, whenever I go out of, out of state in my car, I think I'm driving a new car. New Jersey, uh, there's some And it's because of the roads. Roads are better. <laughs> I know. <laughs> uh, it's not because we're not taxed. Totally okay, enough of that. So tips on how to economize and deal with the rise of gasoline and inflation because Everything's got to be transported by trucks and whatever. Everything costs more. Uh, but the main reason is during Lent, we're looking to raise relief funds for Ukraine. The people in the country, as well as the people who are now in the neighboring countries, and the people in those neighboring countries who are being very, very, very good and generous neighbors, and for all the organizations like Samaritan's Purse that's going there in the country and out of the country, assisting these people. Uh, there's another whole issue of how they're going to rebuild this, this country. It's just uh, reparations will never, will never do it. It's just unbelievable the destruction of these cities uh, that uh, has taken place. Just very sad. But the poor people, something like four million refugees already, that, uh, and uh, it's just, just horrible. Whenever you think about complaining about your day, our day is the worst day is a hangnail. He's a hangnail compared to what these poor people do. So we're, we have somebody that's uh, going to match up to $1,000, and I think we can do that. I think we can match that and take advantage of that. So I encourage everybody during How far the night are you up to? to find. Now, if you just put it in an envelope and say, Ukraine relief, we'd like to have it by Easter, okay, because we have a council meeting uh, the Monday night after Easter. No, it's the Monday after Easter. So Monday after Palm Sunday. Yep, Palm oh, well, we'll decide then. And then the <laughs> final collection will be done Easter. And then after that, if money other comes in, we'll get in and pass it along. Okay? Thank you, Madam <laughs> Chair. Madam Chair. So, um, I've given in the past tips on saving on gas, around driving and all that. Tips on spending. Last week we were talking about buying in bulk. And tonight I'm giving some tips about shopping. Shopping in mostly is about shopping in grocery stores. Now, what you want to do is you get those flyers. You know, we get the flyers. We got the Shoprite. We got the Big Y. We, we got the know this. we got the Stop and Shop, and we got Audi. You know, Milford. We 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 got you know we're blessed, and they're all close by, uh, so you can actually uh, check the flyers for back in my retail days. What we call loss leaders. Loss leaders, things that they sell at a uh, rate of cost or even less than cost, just to get you in the store, motivate you to go shopping, and those are the things you want to you want to take advantage of. And uh, because our stores are close enough by, you could perhaps plan your trip and uh, hit one or two of the stores and take advantage of the different loss leaders that these stores are trying to entice you 
uh, to come. Uh, so check, check the flyers. Also, you know, in a grocery store, my dad used to work in, her, my dad and mother used to work for, in the HERS Village Market. The HERS Village Market. My dad ran the produce department, my mother worked in the bakery department. Uh, they were famous for, they had like an 80 foot long meat counter. They were famous for very fresh butchered meats. Uh, and Mr. Her, he was a great guy. I, we used to, as kids, we would go in the back and just wear the stuff came in. And they had these rollers or stuff, maybe Peter, like you saw, with the boxes. And we would get on the boxes and ride these. We had like a mini, we had a mini roller coaster, you know. And the other neat thing about that, Mr. Her, uh, you know, at Easter we get the, like the uh, chocolate Easter rabbits. Well, sometimes some of them, the ear got broke off or something like that, so we would get uh, some of those things. So it was kind of neat uh, hanging out in the, the village market. Yes, uh, Mr. Jack, a distant relative, uh, and he was a great guy. He was always, um, he was always somewhere on the floor helping people out. He was always on the floor greeting people, talking to people, helping people out, helping people get their stuff out. To the, that's what Mr. Hurd did. He had his managers all the various departments. He was just around the store making sure everything was neat and tidy and, and people were helped out. Uh, Jack Hurd, great guy. Um, so check the flyers, and at the end of the aisles, often they will have stuff on special, on the end of the aisles. For instance, about two months ago, Progresso Soups. Now, two years ago, there were 10 cans for a 10 bucks. Yeah. A buck a can. You know what they were today? This, this year, I'll get to you in a minute, this year they were 11.40 for 10 cans. I made two trips, I bought a bunch of kids. But now they're three fifty nine and three sixty nine. Yeah, today I was okay. Aluminum, yeah. So uh, be looking out for the stuff that's on the end of the aisles because that's usually something yes. also they're calling attention to. Now another thing you can do is buy less expensive cuts of meat. Have you looked at the price of beef lately? Have you looked at the price of beef lately? Uh, so get lesser cuts. A beef cost or go to chicken or the other white meat which is pork and even within the pork and chicken some of us there's don't dine on prices. swine yes okay I, some I, I know don't eat pork somebody my mother always just believed in cooking the daylights out of it. uh but uh by the way people in england only eat meat once or twice a week you don't have to eat meat every meal you don't have to eat meat every day hello you listening at home you don't have to meet meat every day. You can you can be a vegetarian. You can eat vegetarian plant products. You can there are things that have protein in them. There are lentils and beans or whatever. So uh, think about that. Now uh, another thing you can do is use coupons. So I got a couple of coupon flyers here, and uh, these are manufactured coupons. Now a word about this. Um, just because you have a coupon doesn't mean you need to buy it because maybe you don't need it. And even or with the or or maybe <laughs> even with the coupon, the manufacturer is more expensive than the off brand or the store brand. So just be aware about the coupons. It's a gimmick uh, to, to get you to spend. If you don't need it, it's not a good price at any price. ShopRite usually lets you know if it's on sale and the, there's a manufacturer. And, and, and Costco is good about that now also. You don't have to uh, clip out the coupon and, and whatever else. So uh, be aware. By the way, uh, you got the store brands and you got the, the name brands. The stuff is all produced, pro, uh, pro, processed in the same places. Yeah. So, you know, the, P and, the peas and carrots in Del Monte versus the Stop and Shop or Shop Break is 20 to 30 cents of difference. Okay, so. Just be aware of that. Now, one of the best things I could suggest you to do is get a Costco rotisserie chicken, $4.99. $4.99 for a three, four pound chicken. Now, I actually saw Dr. Oz, you know Dr. Oz? Oh my God. He did, he did a, how you could eat for a week on a chicken. How you could eat a week on a chicken because you got the legs, you got the breast, you can, Turn it into chicken soup, uh, chicken salad chicken from the breast, one breast. And he actually had a, a, a how you could eat for a whole week on a chicken. I do that. Yeah. So uh, you can't beat that now. 
Uh, some of the other stores it's six ninety nine or seven ninety nine. That's still a good deal for a whole chicken already cooked, right? On that. Now plan ahead on your trips, so you don't run to the store to get one thing. And uh, my ladies over at uh, De Mayo, De Mayo. <laughs> Belly Nav, you can get a car load and go. Uh, and that way, by the way, if you're buying in, in larger quantities uh, and you don't need all that. Uh, or you don't want to spend all that much at one time, you can kind of have it and uh, save money on that way. So we're having fun saving money. Things I learned from my parents and my grandparents who lived through the wars, lived through the depression, lived through the rationing of the wars, and uh, just were a very thrifty, very, and frankly, a member said, penny saved is a penny earned, a dollar saved is a dollar earned. And one last thing, be careful about what you got in the refrigerator and what you throw out. They claim that Americans throw out something like 30% of their eatable, usable food. That doesn't happen in our house. But I can tell you, because I'm old iron gut. But anyway, uh, <laughs> be careful about discarding. Plan your meals and, and be careful about what you're throwing away. I also recycle stuff, uh, what can be recycled. And then there's the animals in the woods that finish the rest of up. Okay, any thoughts around shopping? We're going to do another subject next week, but any thoughts about saving money on shopping? Yes, Matthew. I've been shopping today, not on my credit card, though. You, you, yeah, Matthew saved because he shops using somebody else's you card. Can use your That's a good way to save money. <laughs> That's a good way to save money. <laughs> but I'm still conscious. Okay, Jackie. No, wait, Don't I didn't about, finish my um, thing. Oh. oh. Don't forget about Ocean State Job Lot. Oh, and I love Ocean State Job Lot. And if you, whatever you don't find at Ocean State Job Lot, you just schlep next door to the dollar yeah, store. Actually, yeah, and you know, a lot of people go into Job actually, Lot it's a dollar uh, dollar uh, dollar because there's some brands in there that are at Whole Foods. Yep. And people go into yeah. and, and go. I send Larry sure. there for our olive oil and our maple syrup. Yeah, Absolutely. Really I love, so I, I love cheaper. the Job Lot. Never know what you're going to find there. Yeah. And then I get like used to buying certain things, and the next thing you know, they don't have any. Yeah. But that's, that's kind of like going to. They, you know, this guy started out as a, a tag sale guy. Up in Rhode Island, yes. Yeah, you finished. Uh, I was just going to say that. You said the soups. Where did you find cheap soup? I want, you know, I usually get the Progresso. Progresso, was they, had, they had 10 cans for $1.40. Oh, or 11 where? Yeah. Where? A, a, a shopper. That was the can can sale, right? That was back in January. Right? Oh, yeah. back in January. It's the, I went today. It's, it's the can 369. Yeah. 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 Yeah, it's 369. I went shopping. I said, I didn't buy any of that. There's two things that it All right, it's 7.30. It's time to shift gears. We're fun saving money. Yes, Suzanne. There's two things that have gone up exponentially in price that could be a lifesaver for people. If we are starting to see shortages, if you buy some oil, like canola oil or vegetable oil, the prices have gone from $4.99 to almost $11 for a big jug. And flour, wheat products, 50% of them come from the Ukraine, Ukraine yeah. and Russia. So if you get enough flour in that, you'll always be able to make water, you know, bread and biscuits and things like that that might not be readily available. So, uh, we're in John 16 tonight, actually the last few verses of John 15. And by the way, Dave brought these in here, so for uh, uh, Peter, could you come up? We have a copy here for each one. Um, Palm Sunday to Easter, the death and the resurrection of Jesus. The Nats already have there, so okay. I'm going to keep one here. Okay. Dave, where did you get these? <coughs> ordered them. You ordered them. Okay. So just a little special for those of you that came out to Bible study tonight. All right? Thank you, Dave. Let's open with, let's open with prayer. Let's open with prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this special season of the year. As we remember, coming through Lent, heading towards Holy Week. Very special time of the year for us of our Christian faith. Bless our time in the Word tonight. We cover John chapter 16. May your spirit, we're going to talk about tonight, uh, be our guided teacher in the truth of what Jesus shared. That we pray in his name. Amen. Amen. So last week we were in John 15 and we left off. I, I skipped over the last couple verses of John 15 because they really go with 
what comes next in John 16. And chapter divisions, as I pointed out before, were not part of the original as the word was given. They only go back 1,000 or 1,100 years, chapter and verse divisions. So you can see how this really carries over into John 16. I'm reading John 15, verse 26. When the counselor, and counselor of the Holy Spirit, referred to as a paraclete, referred to back in John 14, verse 26. When the counselor or advocate, anybody have another word for counselor? Helper. Helper. Advisor. What's that? Advisor. Advocate. 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 Okay. When the counselor comes, whom I will send to you from the Father, the Spirit of truth, there's another expression describing the Holy Spirit, who goes out from the Father, he will testify about me, and you must also testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Verse 1 of chapter 16. All this I have told you, so that you will not go astray. They will put you out of the synagogue. In fact, the time is coming when anyone who kills you will think he's offering a service to God, doing God a favor. Verse 3. They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. I have told you this so that when the time comes, you will remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I was with you. So the disciples were with Jesus for three years after he called them. And there were things that he shared initially. And there were things that he shared during those three years. There were things that he shared more than one time. But now he's preparing them for his leaving them. And he's going to talk very much about the Holy Spirit. The role of the Holy Spirit in the New Testament is somewhat different from the role of the Holy Spirit in the Hebrew Scriptures. We know that, for instance, uh, Samson, the Spirit of the Lord departed from him. He got his hair cut in a devil's barbershop. He lost his power, but he prayed in the end, got it back. And was able to uh, push aside pillows of the temple, and uh, more were killed in that than in his other years. Uh, David prayed, don't, "Don't take your spirit from me." No Christian ever has to pray that prayer. We have the Holy Spirit to abide within us, never to leave nor forsake us. And the Holy Spirit came at Pentecost in fullness and in power indwell the church. That's the main principal difference between Pentecost and before Pentecost. The Holy Spirit coming in power and indwelling believers. Now, Jesus is preparing them for what is to come. And he's speaking in the future. He says, when the counselor or advocate, the helper comes, that I will send to you from the Father. Now, in chapter 14, verse 26, he says, but the counsel of the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. Now, in some of the religious denominations and uh, faiths, they have this discussion about uh, from whom does the Holy Spirit come? The Father. The Father. Now, Jesus said here, I will send to you from the Father. The Spirit of truth who goes out from the Father, and he will testify about me. In chapter 14, verse 26, whom the Father will send in my name. The Holy Spirit will come. I will send to you from the Father. So he's emanating from the Father. God is Spirit. The Holy Spirit is Spirit. And the Holy Spirit, Jesus says, comes from the Father. But coming to the disciples because he is asking the Father to send. And he refers to... The Holy Spirit as the Spirit of Truth. That's why we believe that uh, it was the Spirit that inspired the biblical writers to write what they wrote. God, thy word is truth. And so that's how we can be assured of the accuracy and the reliability of the trustworthiness of God's word because it came from the Lord. And the Spirit of Truth is what guided those who wrote it. And he's also our teacher tonight, always Always a teacher whenever you're reading and studying God's Word, relying upon the Spirit to illuminate what the Holy Spirit 
directed gate. The light comes on, you know, you see that where somebody's sitting in a room and they finally they grasp thing, a light bulb comes on. Well, that's the role of the Holy Spirit in the life of a Christian to help us understand the truth, the spirit of truth. Who goes out from the Father, and what does he do? He will testify about me. And then he says, you also must testify, for you have been with me from the beginning. Holy Spirit is what uh, takes the word in the Holy Spirit to bring people to salvation knowledge, conversion. That's the role of the Holy Spirit, to uh, convict, yes, but also instruct and inspire to uh, bring us to faith. And he testifies particularly about Jesus, the Son. And he says then also that they must also testify, because you've been with me from the beginning. Uh, those three years uh, were their seminary experiences, we might say. All this he said, I've told you, chapter 16, verse 1, so that you will not go astray. Sad to hear from time to time that some Christian leader that's going off the path, going astray, left the faith. And it's hard to imagine uh, how that can happen, but it, it does. And, uh, of course, we know, obviously, the story about Judas. Uh, he went astray. And one of the things that was his weakness was, uh, uh, was no doubt, money. Um, he says, they will put you out of the synagogue. And eventually that, that did take place. As uh, early Christians were Jews, but they, they became a follower of a Jew, Jesus, their Messiah, the Messiah. And those that did not view him as the Messiah, uh, they were throwing people out of the synagogue. And the first deacons were, in Acts chapter 6, assigned to help the widows who were now being neglected because they got tossed out of the synagogue and didn't have the uh, welfare system of the synagogue to take care of them. And the story about the uh, individual that had been healed, and they brought the parents in, and they said, is this your son? Yeah. Uh, when they asked him more, ask him more they said, he's... He's an adult. He can speak for himself because they were afraid to get thrown out of the synagogue. You remember? Well, that happened in the future. And uh, he says, in fact, there's a time coming when anyone who kills you will think he's doing a, a service for God. And that's what the Apostle Paul, he was there. He laid the people that stoned Stephen, laid their garments at his feet. And he got letters. He was going to Damascus to persecute the church. He thought he was doing God's work stamping out this new heretical faith. He thought he was doing God's service. But God looked at him and said, you know, this fellow is causing us a lot of trouble. I think he's a very aggressive guy. He's smart, he's aggressive. I think he needs to be working for us. And uh, at the experience on the road to Damascus conversion, and eventually he did turn, went from destroying the church to building up the church. He said, they will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. So indication that these people really didn't know the Father or Jesus is how they were treating the followers of Jesus and how they treated Jesus himself. Indication, good indication that they were not from the Father. I love that one story. Uh, the member of the Sanhedrin, they were talking. He said, you know, if, if this really is of God, you're not going to be able to stop it. But if it's not, it's going to fizzle out. He said a wise thing, but unfortunately the majority uh, sent ahead and weren't on board with that. Um, he said, I've told you these things so that when it comes, you will remember. It's kind of like being told in the last days there's going to be wars and rumors of wars and pestilences and all this kind of stuff, so that when it happens, we're not caught by surprise. We're warned in advance. This is what's going to happen. He's telling them here. This is what's going to happen. So remember that I warned you. I did not tell you this at first because I didn't want you to uh, not follow me. No, no, no. <laughs> you know, sometimes uh, you say, well, uh, uh, what all is involved before I say yes? So you get a little bit older, Mary Claire, do we uh, ask that question? What's involved before I say yes? Don't blindly commit. But that's not the case here. He says, I'm telling you this now because not at the beginning, because now I'm getting ready to leave you. Of course, he didn't want to hear about that, but uh, he's needing to let them know these things. So I made those introductory remarks. And now we're going to read the next section, uh, verse 5, 
through verse 16. And this is more on the Holy Spirit. You're going to see as we're approaching here in the last week, Jesus is preparing the disciples for his leaving, but also for the coming of the Spirit in power. Can I just comment on you? Certainly. Go ahead. Here. <coughs> in, <coughs> in verse 3, it says, They will do such things because they have not known the Father or me. Now he's talking about they'll be doing it from the synagogue, which means these are the leaders of the Jews. Yes. Yet he's telling them point blank, they don't know the Father. Right. It's not just me, it's the Father. Right. Absolutely. Absolutely. All right, so Kathy, uh, I want everybody to read, uh, say read uh, two verses or so, uh, and just announce the verses you're reading, starting at chapter 16, verse 5. Verse 5. The work of the Holy Spirit. Verse 5. Now I am going to tell him who sent me, yet none of you none of you ask me, where are you going? 6. Because I have said these things, you are filled with grief. Verse 7. Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. It's for your benefit that I go away, because if I don't go away, the counselor will not come to you. If I go... <clears throat> I will send him to you. Verse 8. When he comes, he will convict the world about sin, righteousness, and judgment. Uh, verse 9. Of sin, because they believe not on me. Verse 10. Of righteousness, because I go to my Father, and yes, see me no more. Verse 11, of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. Verse 12, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. 13, when the spirit of truth comes, he will guide you into all the truth, for he will not speak of his own, but will speak whatever he hears, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. 14, he will glorify me, because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. <clears throat> Verse 15, all that belongs to the Father is mine. This is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. Verse 16, in a little while you won't see me anymore, but a little while after that you will see me again. Okay, so Jesus preparing his disciples for his leaving them, and for the coming of the Holy Spirit. So, Question. take a moment to mull over the verse you read, your verses you read, and uh, ask the question and answer it. What did I hear this passage, these verses, saying to me about the work of the Holy Spirit? What do we hear this passage? sharing with me on the work of the Holy Spirit. You're going to see the counselor again mentioned as in chapter 14 and chapter 15. Advocate or helper. So Kathy, you had verse 5 and 6. Mm -hmm. well, he's telling them that he's going to be leaving, but he's kind of um, bewildered because nobody said, well, where are you going? But, you're leaving. And no, like, I was thinking about that today. Chapter 13. How's that? Chapter 13, Peter. Yeah, Peter in chapter 13 uh, said, Lord, where are you going in verse 36? And in verse 14, uh, it was Thomas that said, Lord, we don't know where you're going, so how can we know the way? So why do you think, why do you think Kathy says this here? You think he forgot? Or he's just uh, making a general statement. I, I think he's making a general statement. And then he goes on to say, you know, you guys are filled with grief, you know, because I said these things, but you haven't you haven't said, well, where are you going? Yeah. Well, and, and We're what upset. would that be a, uh, if they had grief because he's leaving them? If they knew where he was going, where was he going? He was going back to, to the, the Father, Father. okay, uh, because he completed the work. Now, of course, they didn't want him to leave them anymore. We want our loved ones to leave us, but 
It is a comfort to know where our loved ones are with the Lord, even though they're not with us anymore. And it should have been a somewhat of a comfort to the disciples who were feeling some grief about hearing Jesus leaving him to know that he was going back to be with the Father. And he was going to send someone, the Holy Spirit, to come and take his place with them, have a presence with them. So that they're, uh, and we're going to see a little bit later in this chapter and how their grief can be turned into joy. Any other thoughts? Skipping right along. Who's next? Lisa. Lisa. Verse uh, 7 and 8. Well, 7, um, he says, Nevertheless, I'm telling you the truth. So just reminding them that even if they are upset, it's true. So um, It's for your own good. <laughs> When people tell us that, they always feel excited about <laughs> it. telling you this for your own good. Yes, I am. I might. Uh, but sometimes we don't want to hear what's for our own good, do we? Yeah. But he's, ex uh, it, I guess when I read the next part where it says, because if I don't go away, the counselor will come to you, the way I understand it is that, like, the... The counselor and Christ, if they were both on earth at the same time, they wouldn't, it could be that it would be confusing. And at different God, roles, different functions. And God's a God of order. So, um, you know, if, if he leaves, then the counselor can come, he can send him, and then he does his work. So, that's and why. One was obviously his physical presence, the other is his, his spiritual presence, so the fullness of the spirit. Unless I go away, the counselor won't come. My Bible calls it a comforter. The comforter, yes. And the important distinction, too, is that the Holy Spirit lives inside so of us. He comes and dwells in us. Right. Right. Rather being Jesus being finite. Well, Jesus, as he was on the earth, he was a finite human being. Even though he was an infinite God, he, was, he emptied himself of his power and came to earth and became a finite human being. Whereas the Holy Spirit is in each of us. We each have, you know, for those that follow, have inside of us, and we carry it with him. You can have the fullness of the Spirit. You can have the fullness of the Spirit. I can have the fullness of the Spirit. Everybody can have the, can have the fullness of the Spirit. Okay. So, who's next? Do we exhaust uh, all the leases? Next to Sue? Sue. It, it's mine. Go ahead, Sue. Of sin because they believe not on me, and of righteousness because I go to my Father. So, I mean, uh, Mary Claire, you, you gave me a three points the other day for a, a sermon. Now, here you got three points. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. <laughs> right. Sin, righteousness, and judgment. But now you sound like a Southern Baptist. Guy. Yeah, right. <laughs> yes. And, you know, uh, you got to get people lost before they can be saved. And to be saved, they need to know they're being saved from sin. So, that's where the Holy Spirit convicting people to know what sin is. To know what what right rightness is, which is the opposite of sin, and uh, there's a fact that uh, sooner or later we're going to face the God, the Judge. You don't want to face God, the Judge, without an advocate. Yes, please. Amen to that. Um, I get the first and the last. I don't quite get the middle one. The first one, obviously, if we don't believe in Christ, we that's the sin of unbelief. That's the sin that that, that can't be forgiven. So that's you have to believe in Christ. Otherwise, you're in your sin. So, and the last one, he says, uh, the judgment, because the ruler of this world's been judged. Well, obviously, the devil's been judged. He's going to be in hell forever. So, but the middle one, I don't quite right. understand. Rightness is just the, uh, what the law was to set forth what was right. And uh, people were to do that, but people, people could, 613 things, couldn't do all those things perfectly all the time. So that just then pointed out our sin. But, you had to need a right standard to know what sin was. To define sin, you had to have a right standard or righteousness. So that's where the role of the Holy Spirit is to define sin by pointing out what is right. It's kind of like when the FBI people study real money and then they can pick out the counterfeit money. You got to know what is right, and that's what helps convict us of what is wrong. Yes? Yeah, well, it says... About righteousness, because I'm going to the Father and you will no longer see me. The only thing I get from that is that 
it's the proper or protocol good thing to do. Because Jesus always, like he went home from the temple with his mother because he was 12 years old. He, um, and we have the spirit of truth now living in us to lead us in this. He's not there physically there to teach the disciples, but he's now giving them the Holy Spirit to come and dwell in and as the spirit of truth to teach them. Okay. To teach them this. Okay. So, all right. Next, uh, Al. Well, we kind of touched on 11 already of judgment because the ruler of this world is judged. So, right. you know, okay. and anybody that's of the world, you know. And there was that's past tense. Yeah. Yeah. That's past tense. It just yet hasn't happened, uh, literally, but it's in yeah. all practical purpose. It, 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 it's already been decided. Mm -hmm. And then verse 12 says, I still have many things to say to you, but you cannot bear them now. And um, I know that I think all but one of the apostles died a martyr's death. Is that correct? Yeah. And then John was exiled, I think. John was, a, John was the one exiled. He was an exile. He was exiled to Patmos, but yeah. I'm sure if they, he told them, you know, how, although I guess he hinted to Peter that he was going to. Now, I might, I might say some Sundays, I have more to tell you, but, uh, you know, it's now 12 yeah. o'clock. Uh, and you've been sitting there for a while, and uh, where do you go to eat? Uh, so you, you've had as much as you can bear, but this, this, <laughs> Jesus is a little bit different when he's saying this. I have more to tell you, but uh, it's not for you to bear. <coughs> yeah, pretty quick. All right, so. A question, Matthew. Yeah, on, just on what you just read. So, you know, it's interesting. Jesus said the prince of this world is judged, the right? The prince of this world is judged. He hasn't gotten out to the cross yet. Yeah. He's, you know what I mean? He, that <coughs> action hasn't happened yet. So he's already got him judged before. Well, God, God is the judge is the one who's dealing with that. But there's a scripture that says, you know, he was the lamb slain <coughs> before, before the foundations of the world. So, I mean, I could never... All right, it's been predetermined. It's but, based upon all God's knowledge, foreknowledge. You know what Harold said? Harold, Harold Camden. He said that, you know what? God did that in another realm before, you know, and, and he just came down here to demonstrate what he had done previously. That's why... Elijah and um, the other, who, who were the ones that Elijah and Moses were able to be at the Mount, the Transfiguration, and they were already into heaven. I mean, how did that happen? How yeah, I don't know about Harold in that one, but uh, yeah, I guess. Know God knows, God knows all things, so He certainly knows what's in the future. Yeah, that's what He used to teach. Yeah. Right. There's, there's a thought. Okay. All right, did we exhaust everything, Alan? Oh, I think so. Yeah, I, that's all I got. I mean, I don't know what else to say on that. It just where it says, I still have many things to tell you, but you can't bear them now. It makes me think of, well, I kind of look back at myself as a child, but I also think of children or even people that are whatever, uh, not, you know, maybe don't know the Lord yet. And God has a lot to share with them. You give it out in morsels. But they can't handle it. So they yes. get, you know, they get some. But And how it must be for God when he looks down on them. And he wants to give them so much, but they have to wait. He has to wait till they grow, you know. Anyway, well, I just thought of the scripture where Paul talks about the milk of the word versus the meat of the word. Yeah. He said milk is for, for babies, yeah. and the meat is for mature people. And he's saying by now you should be eating meat, but because you're still yeah. Yep. Yeah. All right. Who's next? Matthew. Matthew. Yeah. Where am I? Twelve, right? Thirteen. 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 13, 13, when the Spirit of truth comes, He will guide you. All right, this is a good scripture. You know why? <clears throat> well, I go back to my Jehovah Witness friends. They say it's the active force. How could the active force be when the Spirit of truth comes? He, He will, it's not an it, it's a He. He will guide you into all truth. Amen. For He will not speak, oh, He speaks. He will not speak on His own, but will speak whatever He hears. So He's obviously, you know, cognizant of thoughts from God, and he will declare to you the things that are to come. And he can prophesy? Wow. You know, so it pretty much puts a damper, not damper, but you pretty see much... The, the role here of the Spirit, the Holy Spirit. Yeah, the Holy Spirit is not the active force. The Holy Spirit is the actual person of God, you know. Yeah. And he More will, than a force. Yeah, he will glorify me because he will take what is mine and declare it to you. Wow, that's pretty amazing. You know? yeah. So, 
So that's my And the Holy experience. Spirit primarily speaks about Jesus. It doesn't speak about himself. It speaks about Jesus. It's also interesting, Jesus said he will send them. Mm-hmm. Where he said the Father will, will you know, and back up a little bit. He said the Father, he come, the Holy Spirit comes from the Father. So is that that same thing like when we do the creed, like the you know, so the Holy Spirit, we believe in the Holy Spirit, who proceeds from the Father. I never could on these grasp what proceeds man comes from the Father. Is that what we're saying? Yeah. Uh, yes. Sir. Well, what I see is the parallel between this Jesus and the Father and the Spirit of Christ, because when Christ was on earth, he didn't just say what he thought. He said what the Father told him. He was all, and he was obedient to the Father, and he was always sharing what the Father gave he, he him. He attributed what he was sharing and teaching coming from the Father. And here, here the Spirit says, in a sense, what the what Christ tells him. This is an amazing, perfect submission in all of that. Amen. You That's know? love. So, so, yeah. Set an example. Amen. Set an example for us. Very and clear. may the force be with you. Well, I don't believe in the force. It's the and Holy the Spirit. Spirit be with you. <laughs> we just declared that there's no force. <laughs> Very clear. Force is a little like I said. Uh, verse 15 and 16. All that belongs to the Father is mine. That is why I said the Spirit will tell you whatever he receives from me. In a little while you won't see me anymore, but a while after that you will see me again. What's that a reference to? Well, I, in 15, um, I, I think he, he's uh, referencing that the, the Holy Spirit's going to speak to the disciples and tell them what they need to know about Jesus so that they can spread it to you know the world um, but he's also in 16 though he's saying in a while you won't see him anymore and I think at that point they're still not understanding that he's going to go to the cross and and be resurrected I said three days he's right. dropping he's in the grave in a little while you won't see me and then you won't see me for a little while and then, of course, he's going to go back to the Father. Okay. So that's the work of the Holy Spirit. The next section, rest of this chapter, is the disciples' grief turned to joy. He mentioned a reference to grief in verse 6. But now we're going to Peter. We left you off in yeah. reading. Sorry, Leo. Quick, the time we're moving along. Okay. Okay. Peter, uh, three, three verses this chapter. Okay. Um, verse 17 some of his disciples therefore said to one another what is this thing he is telling us a little while and you will not behold me and again a little while and you will see me and because I go to the father 18 and so they were saying what is this that he says a little while we do not know what he is talking about 19 Jesus knew that they wished to question him and he said to them are you deliberating together about this that I said a little while and you will be and you will not behold me again a little while and you will see me Dave verse <clears throat> verse 20 I tell you the truth you will weep and mourn while the world rejoices. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. A woman giving birth to a child has pain because her time has come. But when her baby is born, she forgets the anguish <clears throat> because of her joy. For the child is born into the world. Verse 22. So with you. Now is your time of grief. But I will see you again, and you will rejoice. And no one will take away your joy. So I guess we should have had a woman read that section. Uh, but uh, were you present at any of your births? What's that? Were you present at any of your births? Oh, yeah. All right, all right. Coach Dave. I was there. Yeah, I was there too. All right, next, Kathy. Where do we leave off? 22? 22. 22. Oh. 22. So with you, now is your time of grief, but I will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one will take away your joy. 23. In that day, you will no longer ask me anything. I will tell you the truth. My Father will give you whatever you ask in my name. 24. Until now, you have asked for nothing in my name. 
Ask and you will receive, so that your joy may be complete. 25. I've spoken these things to you in figures of speech. A time is coming when I will no longer speak to you in figures, but I will tell you plainly about the Father. 26. At that day ye shall ask in my name, and I say not unto you that I will pr pray the Father for you. 27. For the Father himself loves you because ye love me and have believed that I came out from God. 28. I came forth from the Father and have come into the world. Again, I leave the world and go to the Father. 29. His disciples said to him, See, now you are speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. Matthew. Oh. Matthew verse 30. Now we know. 30, 31, 32. Now we know that you know all things and do not need to have anyone question you. By this we believe that you came from God. 31. Jesus answered them, Do you now believe? 32. But the time is coming, indeed it's here now, when you will be scattered, each one going his own way, leaving me alone. Yet I am not alone, because the Father is with me. 33. I have told you that all this, so that you may have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows. But take heart, because I have overcome the world. Well, Boy, is that a true statement. Mm -hmm. In this world, you will have trouble. Yeah. <laughs> That's a In this world, you will have trouble. Uh, okay, so a lot of good material here. Take a moment to uh, reflect on the verses you read. If you're there at home to follow along. We're in John 16, verse 17 to the end of the chapter. And the subject of this passage is the disciples' grief turned into joy. So, verse 17, some of the disciples uh, were talking among themselves, like what was happening here earlier tonight, and sometimes uh, in a break into service, right? Who read this? <laughs> Peter. Yeah, it's a verse of a little while, so I <laughs> I have to repeat myself. I didn't know if I was off the line or, or not. But um, um, evidently, you know, he, he keeps me um, saying again and again that he'll be with us, then he won't, then he'll be back for a little while, and then, then he'll be gone again. It's always easy in hindsight to figure things out, isn't it? Yeah. He's talking about something in the future. We don't maybe necessarily comprehend the disciples here. It's kind um, of like trying to explain something to a little kid <laughs> that they, they just don't get it. We're going to go here, and then we're going to go there, yeah. and then we're going to come back, and we're going to go, you know, so. Are we there yet? It, it gets a little wordy. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's, it's interesting. Are we there yet? <laughs> Another 15 minutes. All Sorry. Right. Who's next, Kathy? Oh, 22. So, and now he's now he's telling them at their time of grief that um, he will see you again, and you will rejoice, and no one's going to steal you. No one's going to steal their joy. No one's going to no one's going to steal their that's, joy. That's good to hear. We jumped over Dave. Yeah, you jumped over Dave. You don't want anybody to steal your joy. You, verse twenty. <laughs> you just verses, go with it, Kathy. Verse twenty. You will grieve, but your grief will turn to joy. No, but then he says. No one will take. No one will take away your joy. You don't want anybody to steal your joy. No, yeah, well, there's plenty of people, joy robbers, that try to. Yeah, yeah. And <laughs> joy then robbers, in, joy stealers. And then in 23, and on that day, you will no longer ask me for anything. And I tell you the truth, um, my father will give you whatever you ask in my name. And again, he said well, something like that earlier. He said it. He keeps saying it over and over again. Yeah. But he he leaves out. He leaves out that little that little snippet. Why not in your ask? time, in mine. Yeah, not in your time, but in mine. But he's not. He doesn't say that. He just says, "I tell you the truth. My father will give you whatever you ask in my name." And really, that's. I find it interesting. You know, I. Why do you find it interesting? That 
he drops these hints with the uh, disciples as the chapters go on. And he calls them their friends. But isn't the first thing you ask your friend when they say they're going somewhere, where are you going? You know, I guess it's the suspense in the writing. Well, he's going back to the Father, but he still has some work here on Earth before he returns permanently to the Father. Uh, so there's a comfort there that whatever you ask in my name, uh, you can ask me anything, uh, anything that's uh, obviously within the will of God. And we're led by but he doesn't spirit. say that. He doesn't say that, but that's uh, always the underlying. Well, yeah. Okay. That's in the fine print. Yeah. Lord, help me win the million dollar lottery. Yeah. <laughs> Would it have helped them to know the truth? Yeah, the Lord never, the Lord never oh, answered that Lord. prayer. Lord, help me win the million dollar lottery. Of course, it'd be a real miracle because I don't buy the ticket. <laughs> You'd have to find the winning lottery ticket. <laughs> yeah. I mean, he says it throughout, you know, a zillion times, but he doesn't. It doesn't say. Well, but it's in my time, not yours. So yeah. ask whatever you want, but it's you know. Well, that's a good point. That's a good point. So God's time is perfect. So, uh, next. Hmm? Wait, is that you, Lisa? Uh, well, yeah, he says... Um, Speaking figuratively. Let's see. Until now you've asked for nothing in my name. Ask and you will receive so that your joy may be complete. I find that interesting. That sounds good. Your joy complete? He wants us to, he wants be, us to have complete to be joy. joyful. Yeah. Um, and then he says... Then he basically says he's going to speak plainly. Uh, you know, he's spoken in figures of speech by the time it's coming when he'll speak just straight out. And the disciples were glad to hear that. Now you're speaking plainly, you're not using figures, and you, you can hear, you understand you. Okay. Um, in that day, I will ask, you will ask in my name. I'm not saying that I will ask the Father on your behalf. No, the Father himself loves you because you have loved me. And I believe because I came from the Father. I came from the Father and entered the world. Now I'm leaving the Father, going back to the Father. Going back to the Father. What, one thing I think of is how you had said that we can now directly go to the Father through Christ. We don't have to, we don't have to necessarily pray to Christ. We can pray directly to the Father because, because we're forgiven. And so, and that's, because that's pretty cool. Because he's our Father. Right. My right. children can ask me anything. Kids in the neighborhood, they can ask me too, but, you know, may or may not do it. I may or may not do it with my children, but uh, you know. But my children can call me daddy, right? And we can we can call Abba Father, Heavenly Christ, Father. Through Christ in our relationship with the Father, Christ we condemnation. So we're not Christ is our brother, absolutely. But you know, <clears throat> when we do pray, and the Spirit lives within us. It's the Spirit that's speaking to the Father. Yeah. It's our words, but it's the Spirit. The Spirit is speaking so through us. If we ask in Jesus' us. name, it's the Spirit asking through Jesus to the Father. And that's going to be a successful prayer. Right, because we don't know. I mean, there's places that says, you know, we, we speak, but it's the Spirit that communicates. And even where we're groanings that can't be uttered, uh, that, that, you know, he can even interpret that. Right. That's true. Yeah. All right, where do we leave off? Speaking in tongues. Where do we leave off? Um, that was, um, you kind of covered my two verses. Okay. So I'm happy with that. You're happy? You're okay with that? Yes. Okay. So we're moving right along. We have a few more minutes. Who do we leave off? Al? Uh, what number are we on? Um, mine were 27 and 28. Oh, wow. We're way down there already, huh? Um, 28. 29. Or 20, I'm on 29. I thought I had 28. But Okay. I came forth from the Father and come to the world again. I leave the world and go to the Father. See, now you are that speaking plainly and using no figure of speech. You know, now we understand. Now we understand what you're saying. So, I like what he says next in verse 31. Oh, you believe at last. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, good. Uh, you get it now. You believe it. You got it now, right? Yeah. Yeah, like but, light bulb. Yeah, but then he says next after that, he you says. You believe at last, Jesus says, exclamation point. But it's kind of coming. Sorry. Kind of going to be scattered. You're going to be scattered. He's letting them know what's going to happen in the future, right, Matthew? Yeah. Going to be scattered. The hour is coming. 
And he says, you're going to leave me alone. And the yeah. only disciple that followed Jesus all the way to the cross John. was John. Yeah. You know, what's interesting because this was prophesied. All right. I will smite the shepherd and the sheep and the flock shall scatter. Here it is. He's saying it again before the moment comes. Yet I am not alone. He was alone, but he wasn't alone. Because the Father's with him. But the Father was always with him. But yeah. the Father, what happened when he was on the cross? He's saying, Eli, Eli, lama shakbanaya. Well, because he had the sin of the world. Yeah, so his father turned his back on him. Yeah. That's what Harold would have said. That's what what? Harold would have said. Harold. <laughs> oh, you brought it up, Matt. <laughs> I know. You started it. <laughs> I did, you know. All right, Mary Claire, you finish up. Okay, um... 32 and 33, or did you did you already cover 32? I think I kind of okay. covered okay. it. Yeah. So 33, I have told you that, that all this so that you will have peace in me. Here on earth you will have many trials and sorrows, but take heart because I have overcome the world. So you can have peace in the times of trouble? According to this? If you have yeah, patience. It's, How's that possible? Gotta be patient. You have to have Jesus. Because we got Jesus and we got the Spirit of Jesus. Amen. Yep. Right? And we can endure it all. So, um, you know, um, if, if we, you know, the other day I was getting a little upset. I was, I was a couple quarts low. You know, when we're not quite full of the Spirit and then things happen to us, uh, we say, woo, yeah, that's, yeah. Not right. Yeah. Know about that. Uh, but we can have peace even in the midst of the storm. In the midst of trouble. And in this life, we are trouble. As sure as the sparks fly upward, Job said. Why does, Peter, why in the grinder, why does sparks fly upward? He rises. <laughs> eventually, they, eventually they go out and they come back down. But uh, yeah, it's momentum. trouble is, it's momentum. trouble is, and if you're not having trouble today, be grateful. Somebody else is. And you probably will, you probably have had. In this life, you will have trouble. But we have the Spirit with us, the Spirit of Jesus with us, so we can have peace even in the storm. Um, just, it's what thought comes to me is we have to have patience. You know, if we expect Christ to be here patience, right now. That, that was the, that's, that's the, uh, now, now you're preaching. Patience. Yes. It's a hard thing, patience. Okay, so next week, this the next chapter is a very, very key chapter. John 17. Jesus prays for himself. Jesus prays for his disciples. And Jesus prays for all the believers. Three points. Prays for himself, prays for the disciples, prays for all believers. And that includes us. What did Jesus pray for? And the little word, unity. The little word is unity. So I want you to read next week, John 17. This is what was on Jesus' mind the night before he was crucified, what he was praying for, what Jesus was. So you can imagine being in the same room, listening to Jesus pray. Well, here you can. You can read John 17. So that's what we'll cover next week. And uh, as I mentioned, <coughs> the dates in the calendar, the week of Monday, Thursday, we will have Monday, Thursday service here, communion service, but we won't have the Bible study that night. Okay. But we will have a sunrise service. No, we won't. We will have a sunrise uh, service. No, 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 no. Technically, we're not having a sunrise service. If we were having service at 6 a.m. and the sun rises at 6.09, then we could be out there at the sunrise service watching the beautiful well, nothing, sunrise. Nothing, Hence, we are not being out nothing, there at 6 Nothing is preventing you. We are being out at nothing, 6.30. Nothing is preventing you from coming over from the condo and being here as the sun comes up. The sun will be coming up as I'm leaving my house. <laughs> so, you can go with this. And in a different text, it says it was dark when they were leaving, and the sun was up, so it was there. there was some transportation there. you know. So I know that Easter is later this year. So we could have moved it up to 6.15. What, is it 6.20 or something like that? 6.09. 6.09, whoa, whoa, whoa. Kathy Mary is right. Mary Taylor. We're going to celebrate the rising of the sun. It's already going to be in prison already. Well, She'll get, be there singing Hosanna. It's going to be quite all right if you get here early. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be looking for Jesus. Mary Taylor is 
having a sunrise service. They're starting at six o'clock on the beach. Ooh, well. On our beach. At Walnut Beach. Yeah. We we just stay at the same Beach. time every year, here. so it doesn't confuse people. Okay, <laughs> let's uh, let's close let's close in prayer. Let's close in prayer. If you think of somebody we've been praying for, feel free to uh, shout out, pray for them. Heavenly Father, as we talk about trouble in the world, we think about the Orthodox Christians in Ukraine and the Evangelical Christians that are there as well and the other people that are caught up with the war in our country, displaced from their homes, displaced from family members, destruction in cities. It's hard to believe, hard to believe in the 21st century that this has happened. But uh, we know that one of the signs of the last days of wars and rumors of wars, and there's been plenty of wars still going on around the world in different places. So we do pray for the people there and for our efforts to help in this situation. And we also pray for all of our leaders and we pray for our children, especially at our church as well as children all around the world. We ask God for protection for them and uh, also they come to know you at an early age. Think of some of our numbers. Anthony, coming from Shingles. Deb Murray at the Alvalesa Home, looking to get her mobility back. Um, we pray for um, a number of other people right now that are dealing with some kind of health issues that uh, we might uh, bring about healing, restore them back to our fellowship. And we also pray that. Uh, as we testify of you, as you said we would do, that uh, our community around us will know that we're here and what we believe and who we follow, what we have to proclaim on Easter. And so uh, may our gatherings be used by you to draw and attract others. And we'll give you thanks and praise in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. All right, good night. God bless. Have a good rest of the week. And by, oh yes, don't forget, Palm Sunday is when we're going to really have the big hallelujah service, the mini musical, waving at the palms, and uh, that's our big uh, hallelujah service coming up, Palm Sunday, April the 10th, right? April the 10th. So, uh, you want to get here early that day. Get here early that day. Because seating is limited. Seating, seating is, limited, is limited, but we have, we, have, we have seating here in the Fellowship Hall with a big screen TV, so... Uh, we'll be okay. God bless. Have a good rest of the week.